one of the biggest problems that I had as a younger auditioning man was with learning really hard, complex passages. I'd walk in to play an audition, and all I could think about was that one super difficult moment somewhere in the piece. I'd worry and worry, and then when I'd get to that moment, I'd have a panic attack, like all my blood would drain from my hands. I'd be like a deer in headlights, and then I'd mess it up and feel terrible about myself. Fortunately, I found a solution that became one of the key components of my audition preparation process. It's half the reason that I ended up winning an audition uh, in the first place. So in today's video, I'll show you my strategy for learning complex passages at a high level. By the way, if you're interested in learning the entire step-by-step -step approach that I go through, the process that I go through leading up to an audition, you can check out the audition cheat sheet, which is my guide to audition preparation. Uh, you can download that at robnopper.com slash audition cheat sheet. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the process I use for learning notes here, but first I want to tell you how I don't learn notes. I don't slow practice. It's not that I have a love-hate relationship with slow practice, it's just a, it's a hate-hate relationship. I don't like anything about it. I think that slow practice is just so boring, you know, going through note by note in slow motion. And when you learn something slow, you're learning the wrong version. Like if I want to play this passage at 50% tempo, the mallets need to move through the air at a certain speed, which means that I need to press into the stick with a certain amount of pressure. I'm teaching myself a grip and a particular execution to do it properly at 50%. So when it's time to raise the tempo, I actually have to learn a second version of the excerpt. I'm learning it twice, once slow and then once fast, and maybe a bunch of other versions in the middle. But I also intellectually understand why you would do it. Like, if you run through something at tempo, then you're missing a lot of the details that you should be addressing. It's literally going by too fast. Your brain processes at a certain speed and the number of details flying by is just too fast for your brain. Every single note has so many different details that you should be thinking about and addressing. Like, every note has tone, rhythmic placement, you know, dynamic, articulation, a note length, grip, motion, etc. And if you're just barreling through the notes, of course, then what happens is you don't actually decide any of those things. You just sort of let the sight reading version become your default version. The problem is that even if I play something slow, like 50% tempo, even if I do that, I still feel like there are too many things going on in the notes to actually deal with. I want to have a strategy where I give myself the chance to fully get obsessed with manipulating each and every possible variable and decision about each note. That's the level that I always needed for audition success, and so even slow practice was too fast for me. It took me a lot of years of experimenting and trying things, but I finally found what works, um, and it works really great. I call it the Rome Method, R-O-A-M. It's what I teach all my audition students, and time and time again, I see musicians who play all sorts of different instruments have huge breakthroughs with it. It's like when they try it, suddenly, it's like a light bulb went off. They can learn music confidently. They can trust that even the most complicated passages will come out exactly like they prepared it. That's the beauty of it. And the coolest thing is that when I ask them to record a before and an after, which you should do too, the after isn't just more precise and accurate. It's more musical, more beautiful, and more confident. So I'm going to show you how this works by actually learning a couple lines of music. Let's take this flute excerpt from the Firebird Suite. I've always kind of wanted to learn a couple lines of this. Here's what it sounds like on flute when somebody does it right. This is a recording I found on YouTube by Ji Kang. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Yeah. 
and here's my sight reading version, just playing through. And the goal is to make my version sound like Ji Kong's version by the end of today's video. So I'm going to walk you through how I'd learn something like this. And I'll do it by explaining what the letters in Rome mean. So we start with R. R is for repetition. Repetition is the key to muscle memory. You can look at music and get your brain to understand it. You can play through something a few times, you know, on your own until you figure out how you want it to go, how you want each note to sound, how you want the fingering or the sticking to be. But to transfer that knowledge truly from your brain to your muscles so that your muscles take over and your brain doesn't have to think about each note, you have to repeat it over and over. When you're learning music, you're choreographing your motions. It's the practice makes permanent idea. Whatever you want to be in your muscle memory, do exactly that and repeat it, and eventually your brain will build that exact sequence into your muscle memory, in including physical motions, feelings, breath, and even the mental thought patterns associated with that you know, choreography or sequence. I want to learn music so well that I can forget where I am and daydream on accident but my hands will keep going and doing the right thing automatically. I know I'm gonna zone out. You know, I don't want to, but I know I'm going to, so I need to be allowed to zone out. This is my number one tactic to fight against brain farts, honestly. That happens with repetition. Okay, let's move on to O. All right, check this out. I'm gonna tell you why I'm dumb and why I'm okay with being dumb. If I do a run through of a whole piece, beginning to end, there might be a million things that go wrong that I can fix, but I know myself. At the end of running through that piece, I'll remember like three or four things that happened during the run. Any more things and I'll forget them. And the funny thing is, if you play through a single line, it's the same thing. There might be a ton of issues to work on throughout, but at the end, you only remember like three or four. No matter how big the section, it always seems like there's about three or four things I can remember and focus on in my brain at any given time. So in my note learning phase, I zoom in to the very smallest section that anyone can ever work on at once, which is one note. Every single note is a complicated, layered musical event. Each note, it has, you know, like I said, exact tone, rhythmic placement, dynamic, articulation, length, grip, all that stuff. And if you work on each note one hand at a time, and if you work on three or four things, you know, if you're focused on three or four things to adjust and tweak and fix uh, for each note, then by the time you get to the end of the line, you will have addressed hundreds of things and every note will be exactly in your vision and lodged into your muscle memory. Let's go to A. I already explained this one. I don't learn things slowly. I learn things at tempo, one note at a time and repetitively. Finally, M, I'm using the metronome the entire time to guide my practicing when I'm learning notes. So M is for metronome. So here's what those couple lines sounded like before I started working on it. And here's what it sounded like after I was done. If you decide to methodically shape and craft each note so that it's exactly the best you can imagine it, and you choreograph that into your muscle memory so that you can trust your hands to do that sequence, then you can experience this kind of amazing confidence in your own abilities. 
I encourage you to try it, no matter what instrument you play, even if you're skeptical because you know maybe so many of your teachers told you that slow practice is the key to life and everything, just know this, that a bunch of my students have actually found this to be a key component of their audition preparation process. I mean, for me, it was like the key to unlocking my life. You know, this gave me the basic skill of being able to play something the way I wanted it to be played. If you do try it, let me know how it goes. I would love to hear from you. You know, shoot me an email at hello at robnopper.com um, because I want to know how it went for you and I want to celebrate with you when you experience the amazingness and the breakthrough of Rome. If you have some other note learning strategies that you really like that I should know about, let me know in the comments below. If you want to yell at me that I don't slow practice and how terrible I am and how ridiculous it is that I'm saying this, you know, publicly, then, you know, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> If you want to learn the entire process for audition prep and see where my note learning process fits in with other things like excerpt research, self-recording, mock auditions, you know, planning an organization, all of that, you can download my audition cheat sheet, which goes through, you know, a step-by-step -step audition preparation process. It's what I used before my Met audition. It's what many of my students have used to get to finals and win their jobs. You can download that at robnopper.com slash audition cheat sheet. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up below. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more practice strategies, audition preparation tips, percussion tips, things like that. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.